welcome back to the Botanist Garden Club. I'm Wendy. And I'm Elka. Boy, it's good to see you again this week. I think the weather is starting to get a tiny bit better out there. We're <laughs> all starting to experience some sort of days of spring. And what better time to talk about spring perennials. Perennials you plant in the springtime. Yeah, exactly. I think sometimes there's a little bit of a confusion about perennials and annuals and all of that, but there's a very simple explanation. A perennial is basically a plant that gets bigger and better every year, that completely disappears, usually. Usually, and, that's right. Yeah, and just comes up. It's, it's uh, kind of the word carefree is pretty much kind of built into the word perennials. That's right, but not all Not all of them, but we did a little, little, little bit work for you. That's right. And, so um, yeah. we wanted to present ones that we knew for a fact would be super, super easy to grow in the garden because a garden is a lovely place to be, mm -hmm. but it's even better when you don't have to do that much work to it, don't you think? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think sometimes we, we all want to do gardening, but we also have a life. Yes. And, uh, you know, we're looking for carefree uh, things. We look for, um, yeah, easy to grow stuff. Yeah. And just, uh, you know, and, and basically, we don't all want to be the botanist and have uh, nothing else to do than just gardening, even though it would be actually kind of nice. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that a bit. I wouldn't mind it a bit. And I know we also want to encourage new gardeners to come into the garden. And so carefree perennials are a great way for them to get to you know, sort of feel uh, very successful in the garden. Mm -hmm. And I think in order to become a better gardener or to, to really want to do it all over again every single season, you want to make it very easy. And carefree perennials are definitely the way to go. Exactly. And carefree because because first they are low maintenance. That's one of the big uh, words. They what are do not we mean by low maintenance? When we say that, what do we... Well, is you know what, there is definitely uh, plants that really need to be pampered constantly. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure you water, I don't know, twice a day and you do... <laughs> You, you have to stake them, you have and to have do to a lot of things. And have great soil. Mm -hmm. Great yeah. soil and, and all the extra attendance uh, and fussy. carefree or low maintenance means basically it's a plant that needs uh, a little care at the beginning to get them established and then they are pretty much doing their own thing. You know, yeah, I mean, that's uh, right. obviously if there's like really uh, dry summers or a lot of rain or stuff like that, yeah. then we have to do a little extra help, but uh, that's not the basic of what that plant needs. That's right. And I like the fact that this sort of die back to the ground every year as well. We talked about that a little bit earlier. There is no need to go out the, to the uh, yard and to cut them all back and to cut them all down and mm -hmm. make sure it's neat and tidy because they actually decompose and go back into the soil every year, which is good. That's So they're basically not fussy. That's exactly <laughs> right. And we love them because they allow us to enjoy our garden more. I know my neighbor always says to me, you're out in the garden so much. And I, I do enjoy all the weeding aspect and, and taking things down, take deadheading and things like that. But I, if I didn't have so much to do in the garden, then I could enjoy it more, you know, mm -hmm. lay out in the hammock and just enjoy what I'm seeing. So that's why in the, if you start planting perennials, what ends up happening is the garden becomes more and more carefree because you're not having to dig them up and find a different spot for them. They just comes back every single year in the garden. So you just have a, a bigger, better show each and every year without that much fuss. Yeah, I think that's part of the, the perennials. A lot of perennials, you get them pretty much small, bare roots. That's the, the size that we sell them. Uh, but that is a really, really good size to get established into the ground. So the whole focus of those roots, roots goes into really growing in a nice soil. And year after year, they get bigger and bigger and bigger better and yeah. stronger. And also another what a prerequisite we had for the carefree perennial is that it doesn't, you know, overtake the garden. It can't be aggressive. Mm -hmm. And so we choose the ones we chose today. We want to make sure that wasn't a concern because that can happen. Boy, I've done that yeah, before. Yeah, it's a few things. We usually don't really focus on them because no. they're most likely, you know, available everywhere and uh, not necessarily wanted. Exactly. <laughs> they're not, you don't need to carry them in a catalog. No, they, exactly. they come on their own. It's yeah. not very good. And, and we call them the for, uh, very good for beginners because they actually last for years mm -hmm. because, you know, that they die back, come back, uh, die back in the fall. You don't have to do anything in the winter with them. And then spring yeah. comes and here, here they are again. Yeah, and spring so. every year. That's what I love about it too. Each year I think I'm surprised when my carefree perennials start to come up. I think, oh, there it is again. Like, when does it end? I, I'm so happy to see them every single year. Yeah, yeah. And the, one of the crucial things you have to know about these is you know have to know where to plant them. Mm -hmm. So when you are going to choose them, you have to let them make the decision. You can't go and say, I've got a sunny spot there, I'm going to choose that. You, you have to choose the sunny spot and then find something that will fit 
in the sunny spot. Yeah. And yeah. same with the shade area. You can't go and just choose a rose for a shade area. They have to be, you have to be smart about it to begin with and make sure you put them in the right place. Yeah, I think that is what gardening is all about. We basically have to recreate the uh, the perfect surroundings habitat. Uh, and habitat uh, of the plants. So if you, the first step is you go into your garden, you look where is it I need something, yeah. what are the conditions at that spot? Is it a very shady spot? Is it very dry? Is it lots of sun? Mm -hmm. And then you go into uh, the catalog and we, we marked every plant exactly. with, with the best condition for that plant and that's how you order them then that's for that condition. Very good. And these carefree perennials don't mind soil that's not perfect, which mm -hmm. I really like too because I've got quite a large yard and I, I haven't got all the time in the world to amend the soil each and every year. And so I make choices that are I know are not going to be minding having a bit of, you know, mm -hmm. gravel and not the best soil and every year they, they yeah. come up and yeah. they, they don't mind that a bit. Yeah, totally. So I thought um, one of the plants that I always loved and I thought that is definitely a carefree plant is the anemone and you probably uh, know about anemones. We have them in the fall catalog too. That's right. There's the bulb kind which, which is like a it is Hard a corm. Yeah, it's a corm but this one is the perennial anemone and the one I really love is the honorine jobert oh, so which pretty. is white. Everybody knows by now <laughs> that I love white flowers but it really is is a plant free, uh, a, a carefree perennial. Oh, it is beautiful. I love them. And beautiful because it comes at the end of the season exactly. every year. Yeah. When I've got nothing left in my garden but greenery and then it's starting to go brown, Honorine Jobert, that anemone, she comes up. And it's interesting because the greenery is fairly short. Kind of low, yes. Yeah. yeah. And then that this tall spires come and at the top is this beautiful little flower. Mm -hmm. And bee magnets. Bees love it. Bees oh. love it. Yeah. And because of the height, it actually is quite nice for the back of of your garden. I saw it in, in many parks. When I walk through the parks, they mm. often use them, which is kind of an indication that it is a low uh, low maintenance plant. Because yes. in parks, you know, these are the big <laughs> nurseries that put uh, plant parks mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, you, they don't have time to attend these plants. And exactly. That, you will like never find park. a fussy plant in a park exactly. because there's no time. So that's always a good indication of a, yeah. of a plant for your, for your garden. That's too. a really good point. I love that one. I love Estrancha Star of Billion. Oh. Now, we mentioned earlier, with all of these perennials, the really important thing, too, is you must soak them for at least an hour or two. No matter what form we send them in, if it's a little pod or a plug or the bare root, if you soak them for an hour, what it does is rehydrates those roots, and then when they go in the ground, they're not searching for the water. Mm -hmm. They've already got the water to rehydrate, and every bit of water they get after that goes to growth. E exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and especially when you plant and it's a little bit of a sunny day, yes, you know, good really point. make sure you don't put them all out there and let them dry and you go for lunch <laughs> inside and you come down back and it's kind of shriveled up. Yeah, that's not so good. So it's, it's a really important Carefree, stuff. Carefree, don't, not careless. That's don't right, exactly. <laughs> so a Strancha Star of Billion, I've got them in a container in the backyard and I've got them in a spot in the front yard. These fabulous pincushion flowers come out. They mm -hmm. look like a little pincushion. They do, yeah. Yeah, and they're white with green and a little, tiny little bit of pink towards the end of their season. The leaves are really beautiful, bright green, serrated. It gets to be almost maybe three feet tall. In, in my container, it's a little bit smaller. The front yard is a little bit taller when it is allowed to go kind of wild. Yeah. And they start looking pretty early in the spring. Those flowers bloom profusely. And then even as it starts to go to seed and they start to go a little bit golden, it's very pretty. And I never touch it. I allow it to go to seed mm -hmm. and the birds get a little bit of a feast as the season ends and then as it dries back in the uh, late winter, yeah. it's gone. Like I, I come it's back a total eye catcher, really. It really it's, is. It's a very unusual look. Mm -hmm. I love but that. But easy. Easy, easy, easy carefree. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so when we was uh, thinking what kind of plants are really uh, carefree, uh, or low maintenance, I mean hostas. Hostas for oh, me yeah. is one of the easiest plants I've ever planted. I mean, you know, like especially when when you see in the early spring, this is like a, it's like a, it knocks on your door and says, hello, spring is yeah, coming. Pay attention. You see those little <laughs> tiny pointy things coming yes. out of the of the soil. And especially when we were talking before they get bigger and better, that is the, oh, yeah. the increase of that energy. of that saying. Yeah, that, those, that clump gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And so it's like you get these little pointy things coming out and then it kind of unfolds. Unfurls, like a gift. Oh, it, that really, it is like a yeah. gift. So the one that I chose was the Hosta Barbara Ann. Oh, that's a great, it looks like your shirt, blue it, and white. It totally is. <laughs> it's the blue, blue, it's kind of a blue, grayish, yeah. greenish, mm -hmm. in the, and, the, and then the white that is just so different from all the Hostas. But I mean, we could give you a, just a whole talk just about <laughs> Hostas because they're just 
great. Oh, I know. And you can plant a whole bunch of different ones side by side, or you can plant you know, like 10 Barbara Ann's all in one oh, yeah, area. Yeah. Yeah. Make and a because river off. Make a river Barbara mm -hmm. Ann. Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> and, and the zone wise, they are pretty easy to grow. Yes. And zone shade. Three to eight. Mm -hmm. Shade. And shade. How yes. many plants do we have that are perfect for shade? Well, those hostas are. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't even know and never buy a hosta for their flower, but they, it's quite attractive. I yeah. love the flowers oh, because it attracts bees. You've cut them too. For bees. I, yes. I've brought, you've brought them inside mm -hmm. and that's really nice. And, a, and a hosta, pretty much any hosta, but the, the um, Barbara Ann is just very attractive for me also as a, as a cut flower because it's so different and the, and the, the marble look oh, on yes. the leaves just gives me a floristic aspect in, in just one uh, vase. One leaf, two leaves, that's all you need. Oh Just a my fabulous gosh, you plant. and your creative. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and then the next one, I was thinking of phlox. Oh, you are oh, crazy for phlox. I love phlox. Yeah. And late bloomers, right? So late bloomers and the phlox David is definitely one that I love. First of all, white. Hello, again, white. Add it to the um, you're to consistent. The host. <laughs> yeah, very consistent. <laughs> Plus, just don't talk, call it boring. Boring. Never. It's uh, it's consistent and it's uh, totally covered in love because it is just so awesome. It's yeah, very so many a classic look. Yeah. Uh, the Flux David is uh, actually also very fragrant. I love See, the. I part didn't of know it. that until you pointed out a number mm -hmm. of years ago, and I bent over and smelled it. It's like candy. Yeah, it's just yeah, lovely. And uh, when I planted it the first time, it was really one of those roots. I I had a few left, and I thought you know what I'm I didn't even like purposely go for the phlox but I planted it up and had it in this container and it just grew beautifully high it has quite a nice uh, height but then um, it is a perfect cut flower because of that and oh, the fragrance is there yeah, yeah. oh yeah and not like... overpowering mm -hmm. oh that's mm -hmm. a good choice and I do love the aspect that it is a late bloomer as well because there, there isn't much in the garden at that point mm -hmm. and the bees love and it containers containers yeah, yeah, yeah. you know we all have a lot of uh, places where we need containers because we now go into patios and and uh, balconies mm -hmm. and, and smaller spaces so phlox is just a lovely little plant easy easy to grow that's just good another carefree one is the sedum thunderhead i planted it probably three years ago for the first time oh, sedums anyhow i know mm -hmm. and i'll tell you i don't want to disappoint people across the country but mine are coming up already and they're they're just small right now mm -hmm. uh, but i know the promise of them to come those beautiful purple leaves they're thick they're succulent and they start so early that it gives you something to look for like the hostas but they start producing the flowers in a really tight bud fairly soon say in uh, june early june yep. and when those pop open they're just the most vibrant shade of pink on that thunderhead so the contrast of those beautiful purple leaves that bright pink flower and it just goes on and on and on and they're in their full bloom towards the end of august and then in the september october they start to die back they start to seed and they make wonderful gifts for the birds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and both like the seed, uh, the sedum and the phlox are both for full sun. Yes. Which is and often like what. Yeah, well. that's uh, that's uh, yeah. all. All the sedums actually, uh, if you love something that uh, doesn't need a lot of care in the sun, and you know a, a lot of people often in the summer are gone for for a few days. Uh, you yeah. know, you, you go to the to the. To the uh, camp cottage or, or something yeah, at that's a cottage, right. yeah. So sedums are really, really good when it is a little dry and hot, and you don't, uh, you're not able to water like twice a day. So sedums yeah. are just that's a really for good point. Carefree for sure. <laughs> so I'm excited. I can't wait for everything to start popping up and get to enjoy these flowers again this spring. Mm -hmm. It's such a time of renewal and growth, and when you make it easier on yourself in the garden, that's just. Exactly. Great in my books. Just go for it. Try it because it is. It's not rocket science. And uh, because uh, perennials get bigger, I always say when you when you create a garden, we want the landscape itself of the garden uh, should be established eventually. Like you have uh, big uh, shrubs and trees and perennials that just yes. die back and come back every year and get bigger. Uh, and then you can do a little bit of the the color scheme that you can change with bulbs. Uh, oh, that's or a good annuals, idea. but the the perennials really help you to establish a garden, and then you can actually sit in your lawn chair and, and enjoy them. I that's great. It's good to know. <laughs> well, we hope you've enjoyed this little bit of an episode on perennials. There's so much more we could talk about. My we gosh, will. we will. We will. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to it. But as you know, we love to give things away every week we get here, mm -hmm. and we have a question for you today, and that is name one of the benefits of carefree perennials. Goodness knows we gave you a lot of. 
yeah, things you hints. could answer to that. That's right. So I'm sure you'll have no trouble at all. And we're going to give away three gift certificates for $10 each to mm -hmm. three lucky people who get their name drawn. And you need to send the answer to gardenclub at botanis.com. And then we will draw three names out and three lucky people will get to spend their money on something Yay. maybe like a carefree perennial how about that that'd be nice <laughs> it's always so nice to sit here and talk with you i, I know, really do I enjoy know. It. i love doing that with yeah, you I know. Mm -hmm. we are total gardeners and we love our gardens elka as well as mine and she has helped me put mine together just so you know over the years mm -hmm. with perennials yes carefree that's perennials. right <laughs> and she was oh yeah she got me started on that mm -hmm. so we hope you've enjoyed this episode today we've really enjoyed bringing it to you and we'll be back again next week with another fabulous episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a good week. Bye. Bye for now.